Hey, Vinksters. Today I'm going to talk to you about how I built a kids movie ratings database using Beautiful Soup. So first, a bit of motiv motivation. Um, my wife and I, you know, we like to choose, uh, we're pretty discerning about which movies our kids watch, um, especially when it comes to sexual content. We've got a, we've got a five-year-old girl and a four-year-old girl. And we found that even movies that are rated G, you know, they might be aimed at like a 10 or 11-year-old where there's some, some teenage, you know, love stories, and things like that. Anyways, we found ourselves um, in need of a good movie database that was really quick, easy to sort, so we could, you know, give their teachers examples of, of, of movie lists that, that we'd be okay with and things like that. Um, so I decided to write this uh, web scraping script, which would provide us with a little database and a CSV file um, that would serve that purpose. So one of our favorite uh, websites for doing this is called Kids in Mind. Um, it's great. They've got, um, you know, they, they keep uh, uh, adding new movies every day, um, and they've also got this great rating system. So let's see if I, you know, let's say I didn't know if my kids were old enough to watch Cocaine Bear. Well, if I go into Cocaine Bear, they have a sexual content rating, a violence and gore rating, and a language rating. Um, and so when I was thinking through what I'd want, I figured I would want to pull all of the movie titles on this website, along with some of the other information. Um, I want to pull the Kids in Mind ratings for, for sex, violence, and um, language content. And then since, you know, our, uh, since our kids are so young, uh, I mean, really, <sighs> violence, like, sometimes they, they put a violence score of three if there's a sword or something. I'm okay with that. But, but, you know, sometimes I need a little more context for the sexual content because they might put a sex content of two, but, you know, I don't need my kids watching teenagers with, and teenage love stories since they're only five or four, right? So I decided that in addition to pulling the um, ratings here, I also needed to pull the um, sex and nudity, um, you know, uh, uh, description, description here. All right, so um, let me kind of tell you what we're going what we're gonna to do today. So I'm going to walk you through um, the script I wrote. Um, I used the Beautiful Soup library, and I wrote a few different functions here to, to do what, we, what I needed. Um, and I'm going to kind of follow the format of this blog post that I wrote for Finkster here. So um, first of all, as I was telling you, I had to figure out, you know, what was the what approach was I going to take as I was as I was uh, directing my script to scrape through the website. So if we go to Kids in Mind website, you know, the front page, it's got a bunch of movies. They're, they're organized based on, I think, you know, uh, uh, the date that they came out. But you see that they have this nice A to Z index. Um, so this is, is kind of where I wanted to start. You see here that we've got a different page for each letter, as you'd expect. Um, on the A page, it's every single movie that they have information on that starts with A. Um, the other nice thing is they've got a little bit of information about each movie right on this page. So right away we can get a bunch of information without following a bunch of links. Um, and the way this is organized is um, this is the sex rating, this is the violence rating, and this is the language rating. Um, okay, so right away I decided I'm going to visit each of these letter pages and I'm going to pull all of the movies their year, their MPAA rating, and the um, kids in mind ratings here. All right, so to figure out what the underlying HTML looks like, um, I use this little, uh, the inspect tool in Google Chrome. Um, also, I forgot to mention, th this blog post and this video are, are written and, and, and spoken, I guess you'd say, or recorded for someone who's very new to web scraping, but, but you know, kind of beginner to intermediate Python. So. Um, be warned if, if you're if you're a seasoned web scraper, you might want to kind of skip to the end. Anyways, um, so let's let's check it out. Let's see how all this stuff is organized. So if I right, you know, I'm interested in 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 this stuff here. So I'm going to right click on this link, click inspect, and 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 now Chrome opens up the HTML for me. And you can see that as I'm you know highlighting different parts of the HTML, it it highlights the actual content that that HTML is encoding. So here we've got. We've got an A tag, okay, that's giving me the abandon link. Um, we've got this reference to, um, to, to, the, to the abandon page. Um, and then what's kind of interesting is the, 
um, the information here, the year rating and kids in mind ratings are actually in this little text block um, that directly follows the A tag. Okay. Okay. So so that's really one. Of, then there's a break. So that's really what I what I needed. I need to find. Um, oh, and then last thing, the A tags. All of these are. You see how they're indented here into this div tag. See. So they're always nested within this div tag that has a class attribute equal to, you know, ETPB text enter. Now I'm a little bit new to HTML, so I don't know exactly what all this means, but there's actually um, a really nice reference um, that I found that you might um, find as useful as well. Um, it's called the, uh, it's an HTML cheat sheet, um, found it on Stanford's website. This was really helpful as I was going through, so I'd encourage you to use this as well. Um, anyways, let's go back to our tool. Okay, so I, I think you know we can get a lot of the way there just by following or just by going to each of these pages um, and then finding this div, this div tag, um, and then finding all of the A tags within this div tag. Um, okay, so how are we going to get to each of these letter pages? Well, let's just take a look at the link here, so or the URL. So we got kidsinmind.com slash a.htm. If we go to B, the B page, you know, A just changes to B. Um, so that's a pretty easy way. You know, I can already think of how we can loop through, um, loop through and look at all these different pages, right? Um, okay, now let's just take a quick look at one of the um, actual movie pages. So if I go back to, um, let's let's actually look at uh, the, this is the example I used in the blog. So let's let's go to the uh, Adventures of Rocky and Bullwinkle. That's a good one. Where are you? Okay. Um, okay, okay. All right, so Adventures of Rocky and Bullwinkle. I'm going to assume that we, you know, in the script I wrote, we already are going to have pulled this information, so we don't care about that. I don't need a summary, you know. This is what I'm looking for. I need this paragraph, okay? So I'm going to use my um, I'm going to use my inspect tool again. Right click here, inspect. See what's happening. Okay. Okay. So we've got another div tag with a class attribute equal to et underscore pb underscore text underscore inner, and then nested within that div tag is a p tag. And then again, nested within that is a span tag. And let's see, we've got, so um, there's text here, sex nudity, sex slash nudity with the, with the rating. And then once again, um, it's sort of following this span tag is the actual description text that I want, okay? So again, what I need to do is um, follow each, or what we need to do if you want to write it with me, follow each movie link. Once you get to the movie page, find the div tag with class equal to ETPV text enter, and there might be multiple. So then loop through them until you can find a span tag nested within a P tag uh, that has the sex nudity um, text in it. Because you see, as you go down here, look at this. This violence paragraph is organized the same way, but you can tell it apart because it's got violence gore in the text here. Okay, so if we go back to our blog, this is where I'm kind of explaining the approach. Come on, where's the approach? This is where I'm just explaining what I just told you. Um, okay, so first things first, we're gonna loop through each letter page here, right? This is the letter page. Use beautiful soup to find all the div tags with the with the class equal class attribute equal to this, as I said. So remember, div tag class equal to this. Um, determine which div tag actually contains the list of movies because there were a few of them. Get the text from the div tag, and then find the movie names and information, and then loop through each nested a tag, which you remember here nested a tag, right? And get the URL leading to each movie page. 
And um, this number four will make sense in a minute because at first I actually didn't realize, um, you know, I, I thought that this text here was associated with each A tag, but as I started playing around with the um, with the objects that, that that beautiful soup created once it parsed this HTML, I saw that really the best way was to pull um, I'll show you in a minute, but you can pull the text from this div from this div tag, and it actually gave me all the ratings and movies, and they're all separated by um, by newline characters. Um, I'll show you that in a minute. But that was something I kind of found out after playing around with it. Um, okay, then we got to get the sexual content description. So I'm going to follow this href attribute, which gives me the link to each movie page. Follow each of those. Um, then I'm going to use the beautiful soup library to find all the p tags, because remember, bam, we got our p tag here. Um, so I guess I forgot about it. In this case, I'm actually not finding the div tags. I'm going straight to the p tags, and there's going to be multiple, right? See, there's one up here, um, and there's one down here. We got the sex nudity one and the violence score one. Um, loop through them until I find one that contains this text and then extract the text of the paragraph. Um, and then lastly, um, I'm going to organize all the data that I scraped and save it to a file. So I decided to do that by building a dictionary um, that includes all the information I need, and then convert that to a pandas data frame, and then write that to a CSV file. And pandas just makes it super easy to, to write structured data to CSV files, so I just said I'll, I'll, just, I'll just use that. Okay, so let's actually get to the code. We're going to try to implement what we just talked about. All right, so here's my code. I've, I've um, <clears throat> minimized all my um, all my function definitions for a moment. Um, the main function, oops, sorry about that. Main function is right here. We called it scrape KIM ratings, and the input is going to be a list of um, uh, it's a it's a string. It's a sorry, it's a list that contains um, strings representing all of the lowercase ASCII characters. Um, I did it this way because I thought, you know what, <laughs> as I'm troubleshooting this, I'm going to want to be able to just give it a letter page here and there and let it run for a little bit and then and then check the results, you know. Uh, um, so, so this way, if, if you only want it to do A through C, you can just provide A through C here. Um, but um, uh, I wanted it to run through the whole alphabet, so I used this um, String dot ASCII underscore lowercase. This provides us with the uh, with a string um, containing the entire um, lowercase alphabet. Um, all right, these are all the import statements. We're going to need pandas, as I told you. Request is how we pull the HTML. We feed that HTML into beautiful soup functions. Um, I'm going to need this specific uh, beautiful soup object, which I'll show you why in a little bit. Um, import the string um, library for, for, this, uh, for this specific um, attribute here. Um, import the time library because um, I, I use the time library to, to add pauses in between um, each time I pulled down, uh, I made a request of a web page. Um, this library helps me um, join URLs together, which I'll show you in a minute. And then this random um, um, library, I used it to um, uh, change the amount of time that I waited each time I pulled a web page. Um, this helps, uh, I don't think it made a difference in this scenario, but sometimes if you're pulling lots and lots of web pages from a, from a server, it helps to uh, kind of uh, um, hide your activities. It'll, it'll make the server more likely to think that it's a human pulling web pages or humans instead of, um, instead of a script. Okay, so let's get right into the scrape KIM ratings um, function. Okay, so here first I'm initializing my dictionary. Um, as I told you before, the, the information we're going to want is the title, the year, the MPAA rating, the sex rating, the violence rating, language rating, and then um, the sex content paragraph. Okay, so we're initializing this dictionary. All right, next is the big loop where we're going to loop through each letter in our um, uh, in the string containing them all. You know what? Let me. Why don't I just. Uh, Let's, let's just step through this a minute so you can see some of these. Okay, so step, 
useful. Okay, you can see here we're starting with letter equals A. Um, letters is the list of all the under, uh, uh, lowercase ASCII characters. All right, so let's let's see what's happening here. So first, um, you know, this is the basic structure of the URLs that I showed you. Um, as you see, each time we loop through letter, um, we're putting a new letter in the URL. Okay, I'm using a get request in the request library um, to pull down the uh, the HTML from that page. So this is giving me the HTML from the uh, from the A web page. Okay, so now if that isn't blank. Um, I'm using now using beautiful soup. Let's see, here we've, we've got the the request object. This is the response object. Pull the text out of that, so that's going to be the HTML text. Um, beautiful soup has an HTML parser here, um, and then you create a beautiful soup object. And I'll actually show you that here. Boop boop. Takes a minute to pull down um, the HTML. Okay, so see if I type soup, um, you can see it's got um, everything in there. If I say type soup, see, this is a, a, a beautiful soup class, okay? So once you have this beautiful soup um, class instance, you can do a lot of things with it. Okay, so I'm going to show you how, how the beautiful soup functions um, work on this guy. Okay, so first of all, remember, we need to find all the... Um, Find all the div tags with a class equal to etpb text inner or whatever, whatever. Um, so that's what we're doing here. This find all function is really useful. This is putting it all into this this div variable. All right, let's look at this. So now if we look at that, all right, you can see here. And, and let me show you. All right, again, this is called a result set. Um, object, result set instance. Again, it's a beautiful soup object. You can do things with it. So this is going to give me all of the div tags um, and, 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 and stuff that's nested within them if needed. So remember, we don't, we need to find the div tag we're looking for, which is, that's right, let me see how I found that. Um, yeah, yeah. So I, I figured out by playing around with this, and actually you could do this if you, here, let's look at like div. So you can actually look at each div tag in this um, result set object, okay? So this the first time I did this, this is how I figured it out. I said, okay, well, what's the, what's the div zero? Okay, I don't want that one. What about div one? Okay, move your views by title. And if you go back here, yeah, yeah. So, I figured out that the um, the movie reviews by title was always the div, or uh, the movie reviews by title text always preceded the div tag that had the stuff I wanted in it. So see if we go to, this is what I was talking about. Um, this, as you can see, has all the A tags in it. Okay, so this is what we want. So I'm saying if move your views by title is in the text of our div tag, so watch if I say div one, right? Div one, and then I can use this get, this beautiful soup get text function that gives me um, the text of this div tag. So I said, if move reviews by title is in the text, I know that my next um, my next div tag is the one I want. So I'm keeping track of my, my indices here. I'm setting idx equal to zero, and then as I loop through, I add one to it each time I, I, I loop through the, the entries in the, the div result set. Okay, if I find move reviews by title, um, I add one to my index, and we break. Um, all right, so now, um, yeah, so this is, this was the part that I kind of had to figure out. So I was, I thought I was going to have to loop through each of those A tags, get the text, but let me show you what's going on here. So if I do, let's do div 
to that's the one we want. If I do div two dot find all a let's call that a. Now let's call that let's call that a one. Let's look, look, look and see what's in A1. Okay, so this looked promising. This has got all my A elements that were in that div, or A tags that were in that div tag. But let me show you the weird part. So if we say A10, okay, and then we say A10 dot um, get text. All it has is the um, movie title. Actually, the only way to get the text of all that that had all the ratings and everything in it was to get the text of this of this div tag. So that was something I kind of had to figure out. So you'll see that's what I'm doing up here, um, uh, right here. Movies. Um, it's going to be a list, and saying give me the text of that div tag that I want, which was two. So I can just loop through this here and show you. And the cursor, bam. Okay. So see, movies is now a list of um, all the different movies on the page um, with the stuff we need. To get that, we looked at our div tag, got all the text and then split that string by um, new line characters. Because again, if I just run this guy, it just gives me one big string um, that includes all of these different um, texts that, 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 that follow these, these um, uh, that follow these A, um, these A tags. And I think the idea is that this text is not nested, it's not part of the A tag. See, this is where my HTML knowledge um, is a little bit uh, new because um, you can see that not only am I getting the text here, 2002 PG-13, but also it's giving me the movie title, okay? So that's what we're doing. All right, here we go, moving on. We've got our list of movies. Okay, the other thing I wanted to get before I moved on, um, I wanted to get all of these links to each movie page. So to get that, I did actually need to find all the A tags because remember that the link to each movie page is actually um, inside of all these A tags. It's an href um, attribute here. Um, so that's what we're doing here. We're saying um, links equals, okay. So first we're getting a um, result set give me all of the A tags in my div tag, that's here, that I'm saying for each entry in A, um, which is, I'm using a little list comprehension here, give me the href attribute, and then join my original URL with that guy. Okay, so let's see how that works real fast. Bam, okay, A. All right, A gives me everything, all the A tags. So let's A, zero. We can use, um, this is a cool little, here, let me just show you. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Type A, zero. Yep. All right, if we look at A, zero, you see this? This is an instance of a beautiful soup element dot tag, okay? So with those, we can use, there's a couple different ways to get the information from that tag. You can use get text, but I believe I can also say, I don't know if this works actually, let me see. Nope, that didn't work. But anytime there's an attribute, it's, it's organized in that, um, in that instance like a dictionary. So see, I can say, give me the href attribute. Bam, okay, gives me the URL. So 
you can see here in this list comprehension, that's saying give me that URL. Um, and then the URL join um, function is really nice. It, 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 it adds on like a, a, relative, a relative reference onto your original URL. So let's see what happens here if I do that URL join URL um, a href. Bam, let's see. Will this take me to abandon? Yes, it will. Okay, great. So this is going to um, give me a list of every single link from the A page. Okay, next step. We need to actually parse our big string, which is right now, well, it's a list of strings. We need to parse these out and, and add these to our dictionary. So that's what's happening next. Okay, first I used um, the zip function just to make it easier to iterate through movies and links at the same time. Um, that's what I'm doing here. So for each movie and each link, uh, we're now going to do stuff. We're going to parse. Okay, so here I, I wrote another function to, to parse this, uh, to parse this um, let's see if I do movies zero. Right, this is like one quote unquote movie string. All right, let's parse this movie string. Let's see what, what I'm doing here. Go to, oh, come on, just take me there. Here it is. Okay, um, so something I found um, is that some entries were actually organized a little differently. Instead of, instead of looking like, Instead of being formatted like this, like most of them, they had an extra set of brackets with a foreign name in it. And of course, after you know, when I was writing the blog, I looked for an example and I couldn't find one. But just trust me, um, I uh, I wrote the first iteration um, without this little if statement, looking for extra brackets, um, and you know, I found I, I got some weird results here. But basically, this is saying. Um, if if there's more than one bracket, you know, in, in the movie string, um, or sorry, if it, if there's more than two, then I know that I had that extra foreign um, foreign film uh, title. Okay, so I I realized that the year is usually in the first set of brackets, so I got the year in uh, in indices year bracket indices um, by using the find function. Then I got the MPAA rating brackets uh, indices by, by using the find function again, um, plus the year indices. Um, so that gives me my year and my MPAA rating. Okay, okay. so we got bam, bam. Also, if I know the bracket here with, my, with the year, I know where the title is. That's what this is doing. And then um, lastly, I used the split function to split this guy into two, um, and this was another, let's see, yeah, this is another little tricky thing. Sometimes um, they were using an en dash, and sometimes they were using an em dash. Um, so if this is the, yes, yeah, so this is the em dash, it's a little bit longer. I said, you know, if the length of, if, if splitting this movie gave me a length of one, it means it didn't work. So then I tried the en dash, okay? So anyways, <clears throat> then it's very easy to, to parse out these ratings because they're all separated by a period. So I use the split function again. Okay, so that was pretty easy. You know, once we figured out the format, um, we were able to get the year MPA rating, um, the Kim, uh, or sorry, the, the, the kids in mind ratings, and the title. All right, so let's jump back where there it is. Okay. Um, here I just had a little print statement to show me which which movie I was on. Okay. Follow each movie link to get the sex content description. So this um, this is where I started using the, the time library um, to to figure out um, how long it takes to to pull down or to to, to get the request. Um, sorry, to, to get a response from a GET request um, of each web page. And then I use um, that delay as my wait time times a random number. So this is what I was talking about. 
in between, you know, with it, I'll show you in this function in a minute. In this function, um, within this function, I go and grab the HTML from each letter page. So I'm making a get request each time. Um, this little wait time um, here uh, helps me to wait a random amount, but it's based on how long it actually took to, to load that web page. So try this out a few times and, and you'll see what's happening. All right, so let's go into this, um, into this function. This is where I'm, sh I'm actually going to go get the, the sexual content um, description. Geez, why am I why am I screwing up here? Why can't I find the go to definition? Okay, whatever. We'll just we'll just go find it. It's great. Uh, here it is. Okay, so this is the URL taking us to the movie page. Let's run the cursor here. Come on. Oh, goodness. Sorry about this. Making it look like it's the first time I've ever, ever used PyCharm. There we go. Hmm. Well, I think it's misbehaving a little bit. I'm going to try this because it is useful to be able to step through um, this thing here. Let's stop that. And go. Okay. So while it's, while it's thinking, we're going to start talking here. So um, first thing is, once again, to use our request library, get request, to get a response. We then feed the text of that response into beautiful soup. Out pops this soup object, or you know, you know what, what was it here? I'll speak um, technically here. It is. It's a, It's a. It's an instance of the beautiful soup object. Okay. Uh, close that off. All right. Now we're gonna find. Okay. So this is another thing I discovered. Let's. Okay. First of all, <clears throat> yeah. So this stuff I actually added after playing around with things because I figured out after looking that some of the um, movie pages are organized like this, like on the Adventures of Rocky and Bullwinkle. And some of them are actually organized like this. In the div class, or sorry, in the in the div tag, we've got an H2 tag nested within it, followed by a P tag. Now these are siblings, not children, meaning they're both nested within the div tag at the same level. This P tag is not nested within H2, it just follows H2. Okay, so that's that's going to be a little bit different. Um, so rather than making you look at this first, I'm just going to, I showed it to you, so I'm going to show you how I, how I got around that. Okay, so first um, we're going to find all of the H2 tags. That gives me this result set with all the H2 tags there. Okay, initialize our sex content. Check the H2 tags. Yeah. Okay, you can see that in here, they, they, this was actually a little easier. They organized it with, they gave each H2 tag an attribute. So this, this ID equals sex. And then later down, let's look at this one. See, like this ID equals violence. That was actually a little easier. If there is an ID attribute, 
in. Okay, so this is another little uh, function to use, or I guess this is an attribute of the of the result set. Um, there, let's let's just use it. If you use attrs attributes, and let's show you what entry is. Okay, so entry is a beautiful soup tag um, instance. It has this attribute called attributes, and that gives you a dictionary of all the attributes of that tag. So see, um, the one we're dealing with here, it only has a class attribute. Let's see if we can. Um, so that's why I had to check to see if ID is actually one of the keys um, in that dictionary. If it is, we'll pop in. If not, we go back. Yeah, so so I'm basically checking for both at the same time. If um, and let's move. Let's see if it'll let me go to cursor this time. See, it's actually finishing with um, movies as we're talking here. Um, but basically, if it does find, okay, one, if the ID tag or if the ID attribute exists, then if the ID is equal to sex, then we have to get. Oh come on, why are you being so slow? Holy cow! Oh, I know why. <laughs> That's silly. All right, let's do this again. Let's go to here. Okay, so um, instead of looking for uh, a child or a nested tag within that tag, what we want is we want to look for a sibling. So is it, are we here yet? No, we're not here yet. Um, okay, great, we're here. So this P tag is a sibling of this H2 tag, this one. So let me show you right now. Entry, that's the one we want, H2 with ID equals to sex. And then entry dot next siblings. Come on. Oh, you got to loop through it. So. Or here we'll just it gives it, it it gives you a generator object. Here we go. So for sibling in our um, iterable, bam, let's look at sibling. Okay, that's not what we want. I'm trying to find where it shows that in here. Actually, um, I don't really see it in here, but. This is why I have this, if the type of the sibling, see right now, type is just gonna be string. If the type of the sibling is a tag, okay, we're in business. Um, keep going, keep going. Okay, so now it's gonna come up true. Type, sibling, tag, great. And I didn't really do any checking to see if it was a P tag or anything because it, it was always, whenever I found these, uh, the H2 tag with an ID equal to sex was always just followed with a single P element that had the stuff I needed. So we just assume that. If we get a BS4 element tag, we're good. All right, next, um, we're pulling all the text. Um, and this is one thing that I was kind of playing around with different, you know, beautiful soup functions. So let's do this. Sibling. You can either use sibling dot text. Come on. Or sibling dot get text. Yep. So there's a few different ways to to, to pull the text um, associated with with a tag. All right. Give me all that text. That's what we need. Um, now, 
for the other movies that had that were organized a little bit differently, we just had to find all of the P elements. You know, if we didn't pull sex content using this method, we looked for all the P elements for every entry in the P set. We said, um, you know, if sex nudity exists in it in its text, um, then pull the text. That's what we wanted. Uh, let's go. Well, it's not gonna. <laughs> So you can see. Let's do it. Um, and once I show you this, I think it'll be pretty obvious how we use pandas. So we're almost done here. All right. So see if bam. Oh, it wasn't because entry dot text was come on was this one of the fifty coolest websites? Yada yada yada. Okay. Nope, haven't found it yet, haven't found it yet, haven't found it yet, haven't found it yet. Found it, because look at our entry. Yep, entry.text. Here it is. So see, the text actually contains everything. Um, it contains this sex nudity, you know, title, and then all the description. So that's what we need. So if we find it, good. We're just going to break out of here. All right. Since PyCharm is being weird, I'm just going to stop that. Okay. Let's minimize this. Minimize this. All right, where were we? We were at Parse Movie. Nope. We were at Scrape Kim Sex Content. Okay, so we got the sex content. Like I told you, we delay a little bit differently in between uh, making requests of each web page. Okay, we're in the home stretch here. Now we're going to build the dictionary. Um, just all I'm doing is making lists in each. Um, uh, uh, as a value for each key in the dictionary, um, just appending the new title year and the new ratings, etc. Um, and then I decided to write to a CSV file after every letter in case you know something screwed up. It takes a script quite a while to run, so it finally got through, you know, half of it, and then and then it uh, then it clunked out on me. I didn't want to lose all my work, um, so um, here's how we write to the CSV file. Um, PD is, is, is how I imported pandas. So um, this data frame uh, function is very nice. It, it's pretty re it's pretty robust against different uh, things. You should go read about it. But anyways, if you feed it a dictionary, it will create a data frame for you. So now DF Movies is a pandas data frame, and this has a nice little method to CSV. Just throws um, throws your data frame into a CSV file for you, um, and that's what I did. Um, uh, just a little reporting. I'm done with this letter, and I'm going to wait a little bit of time, um, et cetera. And that's it. Okay, so now let me show you the result. Uh, here it is. Movies. Spam. Here it is. So you can see we've got this nice CSV file. Oop, did I miss this one? Hold on a second. This is an old version. This is the newest version. So this is as after I've converted it to, to an Excel file and done some filtering and stuff. But we've got this nice um, CSV file, which you can immediately save as an Excel file. Um, <laughs> these are kind of awkward. I won't scroll through those. But um, it has it all organized with our, uh, uh, in a nice little database with our um, language rating, violence rating, sex rating, and then if it actually has an appropriate sex rating, you know, it's very low for a four or five year old, you can go check out the content just to make sure there's nothing weird. Um, so this has allowed, you know, my wife and I to, to filter and, and create lists of good movies uh, much more quickly than if we had to go through the website uh, um, and, and, and do it, you know, um, by hand. Now, I also, I guess for improvement, um, I think in the future I'd like to pull um, more ratings and, and descriptions of, of, of age appropriateness from, from different websites. So I might do that and then add it on to my, goodness gracious, let's, <laughs> and add it on to, um, to my data frame here. Um, what else was I, was, I was thinking there was a couple other imp improvements I thought about making. Um, mm, that's right. I think you know. Let, let's say that there's like five different movie uh, websites that I that I pull information from. I'm also going to need a function that lets me just update um, update my database 
and, and somehow check each check each web check each website for, for new movies. Um, that way, I won't have to you know scrape through every single movie page again. We'll just check for the new ones. Um, it'll run a lot faster. So those are my two ideas for for um, for improving it. Maybe you'll see those in a future blog post. But um, with that, I'll let you go. You know, I hope that this uh, was useful to to go through this in in such granularity and detail. Um, and uh, you know, I hope this inspired you to write to do your own uh, little uh, web scraping project. All right. Uh, with that, I'll be done. Thank you. <laughs>